Well, it's almost Halloween, so it's time to talk about horror games. Horror is like sex part two! What are these horror games that you people speak of? <laughs> what, Matt, do you not enjoy this? You know I am the last person to play a fucking horror game. I mean, you heard you heard me on the last Twitch stream that we did with the three of us plus Llama Pockets and how much of a chicken shit pussy I was playing Outlast 2. Got a nimble guy to be able to pull a 360 under a bed. Oh, balls! What the fuck is that? <laughs> Matt just had a convulsion on the couch. Oh my god. Oh my god. Fuck you all. Again, I'm the last person you want to ask when it comes to horror games, so... Finally got around to playing The Evil Within. I know that game's like ages old and stuff like that, but I just... <laughs> I barely discovered that they made a second one that recently came out, so... I'm in a bit of a rush trying to finish the first one before I can move on to the second one. Diet Resident Evil. <laughs> Diet Resident Evil. Even the title, The Evil Within, is essentially Resident Evil. Well, yeah, wasn't that created by the same guy who did the Resident Evil series, though? Yeah, Shinji Mikami, who, um, he worked on, like, all the Resident Evils up until Resident Evil 4, and then he left. Yeah. Which is reflected in the quality of the Resident Evil games. Yeah, that explains its downfall. Yeah. Uh, with the exception, of course, of Resident Evil 7, which seems to be, um, taking people by storm. Taking survival horror fans by storm. Yeah, it was alright. I mean, the first play is pretty great. The turn that it took, it was actually pretty good. I rather enjoyed it. It's a step in the right direction. About damn time too. Gosh dang. Mm -hmm. While we're on the subject of Resident Evil, it's actually a great representation of where the horror games industry is. You can kind of see it reflected in every Resident Evil game because you see the first Resident Evil game which is really the birth of survival horror. It coined the term survival horror. Yeah. And then you had Resident Evil 2 and 3 came out in like 1998 and 1999 which is when, uh, you know, it starts to become mainstream. You'd get titles like Silent Hill coming out, Dino Crisis, things like that. Although, <laughs> although I think- Dino Crisis? <laughs> yeah, Dino, well, Dino Crisis is also by Shinji Mikami. Oh yeah, that's so. true, good point. Wait a minute, so how is Resident Evil the godfather of horror games when you have like the NES Japanese game Sweet Home, which apparently is the one that, the game that Resident Evil was supposed to be based, not based off of though, but kind of took cues from. And you also have the SNES Clock Tower, which did that come out before? or after Resident Evil? Um, no, the SNES one came out in 1995, but the reason Resident Evil is like the, the main thing of survival horror is because it actually coined the term survival uh, horror. Yeah. And it was also um, where all of these elements from these different games were brought to a head and taken to the mainstream. Yay, hey, tank controls! Those are the bane of my existence. <laughs> I don't actually have a problem with tank controls, I don't know- Tank controls suck. Dude, that's why you suck at games. You just need to get better with it. <laughs> I mean, look at me, I'm a huge Silent Hill fan, I rock with the tank controls. Exactly, what are you, a game journalist? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Resident Evil is a good mirror because then you had Resident Evil 4 that came out, which, um, I mean, that pretty much changed the way the games play. You know, everyone used the over-the-shoulder kind of camera that Resident Evil 4 had, mm -hmm. kind of used a lot of the, of the same mechanics. And that was the point where Shinji Mikami left. And the reason he said that um, they took Resident Evil 4 in a more action-oriented route is because he said the remake, which was on the GameCube, didn't sell very well. And it's like, motherfucker, port it to something other than the GameCube then. Exactly. Most people had a fucking PlayStation 2. Yeah. Why was it not on a PlayStation 2? Exactly. And then Resident Evil 4, the reason he left was because he wanted Resident Evil 4 to be GameCube exclusive. And Capcom basically went over his head and, and ported it to the PS2. Well, I heard that, I heard that there and was a falling out between Sony and Capcom that made it a GameCube exclusive for the longest time. Well, I mean, he was trying to get the Resident Evil series just on the GameCube mm -hmm. because Resident Evil Zero was on the GameCube, Resident Evil Remake was on the GameCube. He was almost a GameCube fanboy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kwai chan They went ahead and ported it to the PS2 and he wasn't happy about that, so he left. But I mean, it boosted Resident Evil 4's sales considerably. Oh yeah, no one wanted to buy a GameCube just for Resident Evil 4 and everyone's like, oh, this is such a great game. And everyone's like, oh, it's on the GameCube. Oh, I guess I guess I won't be able to play it or I'll borrow someone else's GameCube and play it there. But I mean, Resident Evil 4 on the GameCube didn't even really sell that much more than the remake. 
Yeah, and the remake was considered a failure because it didn't sell. Yeah, but then, you know, they continued with that trend of making it more action-oriented, and without Shinji Mikami there to add the kind of horror elements, Resident Evil 5 just became an action fest. Yep. A racist! A racist action <laughs> a fest. A racist action. They, of course, got Resident Evil 6 with the zombie tank? I can't remember. Oh, Hang on, Resident, Resident Evil 5 is about um, law enforcement going around shooting black people? <laughs> oh god. <laughs> So that's what survival horror is about. And many people were wondering why Resident Evil decided to take, you know, continue with this trend of action. And uh, the producer had the answer. He said that survival horror was a too small a market to capitalize on. He thought that the horror market was too small. So he said, quote, Resident Evil needs to be an extension of the changes made in Resident Evil 4 and 5. He thinks that, especially for the North American market, we need to keep going in that direction and take it a step further. That's exactly one of the reasons that Revelations is the way it is, despite the fact that actually Revelations is more of a, a game that takes it back to the roots. Wasn't he also comparing the market to Call of Duty and shit? Yeah, yeah like we need more of those. He said, this is a quote, Looking at the marketing data for survival horror games, the market is small compared to the number of units Call of Duty and all those action games sell. A survival horror Resident Evil doesn't seem like it'd be able to sell those kind of numbers. Mm, so... Yeah. Yeah. And then Resident Evil 6 came out, and I mean, it sold a lot, but people hated it. They did. Cap Capcom lost the visionary that basically created the Resident Evil franchise and mm -hmm. just totally corporatized it, where it's like, oh, we gotta look at the numbers. We gotta look at the numbers. The numbers are what, what matters. We need to make this Call of Duty with, with zombies yeah. and shit. We need care to the one kind of gamers instead of everyone else, you know. Ah, oh, fucking mm -hmm. <laughs> but, then, but then he says that, and in Resident Evil 6 came out, everyone hated it. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, between then and now, uh, Outlast came out, uh, Amnesia came out. Five Nights at Freddy's. Five Nights at Freddy's came out. <laughs> hey. Whether you like them or not, they were all big successes, specifically because they tried to be scary. It does, you know, kind of disprove Capcom's theory that nobody wants these types of games. Exactly. Yeah. Especially when you, especially when you have the rise of the YouTubers and that's pretty much all they play. And of course, PT came out. Oh, yep. Yes. The game that we should have had. Many people are comparing Resident Evil 7 to PT saying, well, I mean, that's obviously, you know, where they why they decided to do all that. Um, the Inspiration, copy paste. The guy <laughs> the guy behind Resident Evil 7 said that um, actually uh, Resident Evil 7 was in development this way for like a year before PT came out. Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. I smell bullshit. Sure. That's gotta be bullshit, because, <laughs> okay, you have Kojima and Del Toro. Obviously, you're gonna get something interesting and new. Can you imagine Capcom having a single, unique fucking thought in their head? <laughs> The, 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 these, this is the company that brought you Street Fighter, Super Street Fighter, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, and the list goes on, and it's the same fucking game over and over and over again. I cannot picture them doing anything else but a copy-paste job of PT, rushing it out and saying, oh, well, Konami's gone, and they can't contest what we're saying, so yeah, we this is our original idea. Really. Yeah. Fuck them. Well, and then and then Resident Evil 7 came out, and it was much more, you know, the horror, the horror game that Resident Evil fans have been craving for so long. And people loved it. Yeah, I've seen yeah, I've seen yeah. footage of it. Uh, you know, keeping my browser just just inside the comment <laughs> box, so you know you can hear what's going on, but you can't see it. <laughs> oh. Did you mention the fact that doesn't the reception of Resident Evil 6 leave a bad taste in people's mouths that would transcend to 7? Yeah, Resident Evil 6 was such a disappointment that when people heard Resident Evil 7 was going to come out, they were like, uh, Fuck this shit. I don't want to. Because Resident Evil 6, they kept saying, was supposed to be trying to take it kind of back to the roots. Resident Evil has become the fucking zombie you keep trying to kill. It just won't fucking die. Keeps coming back from the dead. Yes. More and more grotesque every time. Yeah, compared to the sales of Resident Evil 6, Resident Evil 7 hasn't sold as well. But you have to consider that whenever there's a disappointing game, it's usually the next installment that ends up taking a hit. And then you also got the fact that, you know, it was taking a big risk and people who liked Resident Evil 4, 5, and 6 for the more action aspect would probably be disappointed by this game. So, I mean, it's kind of not surprising that it didn't sell as well as Resident Evil 6. I'm guessing they were skeptical about it, considering it was going back to their roots, and they really didn't consider about catering towards the older fans who wanted their horror franchise back. There, there seems to be a trend with Capcom in the past couple of uh, Resident Evil games where if it's got more horror aspect, they kind of don't try and capitalize on it. They don't, they don't try and advertise it. I mean, Resident Evil Revelations was uh, was more scary than Resident Evil 4, I thought. But they only released it on the 3DS, and it was only because so many people were like, this game is amazing, why is it not on the PS3, that they decided to port it to the PS3. And same with um, the, the uh, Resident Evil 5 DLC, when it's, where it's set in the mansion. For a lot of people, that's the only reason they play Resident Evil 5, is just because of that scenario. Because it's a lot better than the actual fucking game. <laughs> but then you also have games like Fatal Frame, right? 
And I love Fatal Frame. I never got around to playing Fatal Frame. I feel sad about it. Fatal Frame's good. It's really creepy, really dark, um, very um, intimate. I heard the second one is highly recommended. The second one is, is the best one, I think. Okay. It's my favorite. So Fatal Frame uh, 1, 2, and 3 came out on the PS2. Then Fatal Frame 4 came out on the Wii, but only in Japan. Really? Um, <laughs> yes. Why? Because Nintendo, that's why, Mel. Oh, okay. <laughs> Nintendo bought uh, the rights to Fatal Frame, and they only released the fourth game in Japan, despite many people asking them to port it over to the US and the UK. Oh, you need yes. more Mario! And they, and they said no, because Nintendo doesn't give a shit about a game that they have unless it's Mario or Legend of Zelda. Yeah, exactly. So this, this one came out on the Wii, correct? Yeah. Not the Wii No, this one came out on the Wii, and the only way you could actually play it is somebody released a fan translation patch, which I downloaded and played, and... Mm -hmm. The game looks. The game is gorgeous. Um, it's really a step up from, in terms of controls, it's a step up from the previous three because using the motion controls to to control the camera obscura is just perfect. It's what it's 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 basically what this game should be on. And then Fatal Frame Five came out on the Wii U. Now imagine using the Wii U pad for the camera obscura. Perfect. It's it's the oh perfect goodness. game. It's the perfect game for the Wii U. But wow. the only physical release for that was in Japan, and they only released it digitally in the UK and the US, as far as I know. So... Oh, that's brilliant. So you have this game, which is absolutely perfect for the Wii U, right? Um, it's almost like it was built for the Wii U. And Nintendo don't decide to use it as one of the games th to advertise the Wii U with. <laughs> it's because it's Nintendo, but they haven't done a fucking thing right in ages. <laughs> Exactly. Oh can you my imagine? God. Can you imagine how many people would have would have bought a Wii U if they'd have seen Fatal Frame? I know, right? I just, I, I never knew that they even took out a new Fatal Frame after three. So no, but I mean the fact that there is a, tr a fan translation of Fatal Frame Four and that so many people have downloaded it and played it themselves just goes to show you the demand for Fatal Frame Four, and the fact that they could have sold so many more units of the Wii U if they'd have advertised, put front and center Fatal Frame, this game that utilizes the Wii U in such a, a great way. And instead, Nintendo has a property that they just Hashtag sit oppressed on. horror games. <coughs> Eternal <laughs> darkness. A lot of people over here didn't even know that there was a fourth and fifth game, like Mel. Yeah, that breaks my heart, gosh dang it. I want my horror games. And then, exactly, and we don't even want to talk about Silent Hill. <gasps> How dare you? We always have to talk about Silent Hill. I don't. It's no. too sad for me. What? I can't. Well, I know it ended up. It ended on a very rather horrible, terrible note. But you know, you gotta look back on the first four games that you know before the team Silent parted ways and stuff like can, that. Can I? Can I make? A, can I make a slight correction? The first three games. For, oh, what you didn't like Silent Hill Four? Oh God, Silent Hill Four, man. It, there's one thing I hate. It's it's when a game stops midway through and says, "Now you have to explore every area again." Oh, but this yeah. time with an escort mission. <laughs> yeah, there is that one. That is that one downside to it. You know, it's just like the sec the other half of the game does become tedious until you finally, you know get rid of Eileen and go about your own way. It's like, ah, oh, finally. Oh, God. I can enjoy the rest of this uh, level. <laughs> you have to play the whole game again with an escort who's got a broken fucking arm and leg. I can't go up the ladder with my arm like this. I could! Bitch. <laughs> yeah, get fucked. Especially if there's monsters after you, you'd be limping up that fucking ladder faster than a guy with two two working hands and two working legs. <laughs> you know, she would, she would be able to function a lot better if she had that sexy nurse outfit on. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> the the guy is like, no, you first, please, go the ladder first. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Henry is a very lonely man. Mmm, <laughs> patriarchy. <laughs> but I mean, let's talk. Let's talk a little bit about the indie scene and horror games because that's really where the future oh, is. Oh yes. I think. Uh, yeah. I think. One of the things that makes indie horror games work is because there's a, there's a small amount of people working on it. So it's almost like mm -hmm. there's, a, there's an issue of uh, when it's a AAA game, too many cooks spoil the broth. Exactly. Yes. Uh, a camel's a horse created by committee. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that, that, that's kind of the, the, the joy of the indie movement is that people who have a clear vision and, you know, even a modest budget, a modest team can create something that they want to see and then people just you know kind of like through osmosis it's like hey you know this is kind of something i like too yeah exactly it's uh, it's like what you said it's something that uh something that people want but it doesn't exist so they got to make it themselves it's it's basically not suicide squad yeah it's, it's not dc <laughs> and warner brothers being like hey you know what i'm a i'm a director who has a vision and it's like wait a minute but you have to include this you have to do yes. this you have to make this we have to reshoot some ex I mean, some that, executive with a fucking checklist of shit yeah 
And that's exactly what it is. All these fucking executives making these creative decisions are nothing but fucking exactly. bankers. They're glorified yeah. accountants. They're not creators. They're yeah, not they visionaries. Got these, They're not they artists. Got these independent creators that they just they just want to do it. You know, they want to make something. You know, that they've vision in their head. They want to do this for the creativity and they want to share this experience that they have with everyone else. And it's beautiful. Well, I mean, yeah, it is. I think in conclusion, I hope Resident Evil continues to mirror the horror game industry with Resident Evil Seven introducing more triple-a horror games exactly oh hell just just not even they don't even have to be triple-a just more horror games just in more general. horror games I mean, in exactly yeah but and also i'd like to say um shinji mikami says that he may come back to direct for resident evil 8 really yeah Ooh. If, if capcom, capcom if cap yeah. fucking if capcom if capcom are willing to let him kind of give him free reign then he said he'd be willing to come back for resident evil 8 we'll mm. see we'll see how exactly was this supposed to be horrors like sex too? Because I mean, how is this? because we were talking about how the horror industry is fucking us. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was thinking it was like you know trying to trying to have sex with somebody and like a banker sitting over your shoulder going no no lick her titty. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that that that's isn't that the kind yeah, of thing that's pretty having sex that's what of, of how these horror yeah, games are getting fucked over. Just having to, having having sex with someone is a raw and intimate experience while shooting a porno is just a, a mannequin fake mess exactly that's what that's why you gotta hey, go with that's the not underground. bad you gotta go with the underground people this is what it means when we swing on your brother